Welcome to Dreon's Realm. Today we're going to be looking at the 8-Bit Do Lite Bluetooth Gamepad. Now when it comes to controllers on the Nintendo Switch, there's a lot of different options. Personally, I happen to prefer, when it comes to wireless controllers, I happen to prefer either Nintendo's own Joy-Cons or specifically the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, which as far as I'm concerned is one of the best controllers that you can buy on the market today. But I will say that their prices are a bit high. But when it comes to an option outside Nintendo's own controllers, one of the companies I happen to like quite a bit is 8-Bit Do. They happen to make some really high quality controllers and they work across a variety of platforms. Their build quality is really good and they feel about the closest that you can get to a first party controller from Nintendo outside of controllers made by Hori. And today we're going to be looking at the 8-Bit Do Lite. As you can see it's a rather small controller. It's actually pretty tight and compact when you look at it. And for its functionality, it's actually really good for its price. Now, its buttons, they have the clicky feel and they are on par with how the Joy-Cons feel. Now what's interesting is this controller has what are called digital joysticks. What that means is that these two D-pads actually register as analog sticks. It's kind of fascinating. Because, for example, a good game would be Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening. The remake on the Switch will not allow you to use digital movement. You have to use the analog sticks. But, weirdly enough, the analog actually feels digital. It moves in eight directions. And Nintendo has not made an option where you can use these buttons in place of this. So if you've played the old Game Boy version, it's going to feel a bit weird. Now with this controller, because of its digital joysticks, that means that any game that requires you to use an analog stick will be picked up by this. There is a little bit of a problem because yes, there is an L3 and R3. Those are the buttons that when you click in on the stick, they technically are on here, but it requires you to push down the center and all four directions have to be pressed at once. It's not ideal and it actually doesn't work that great. Um, personally, I would have preferred if they put, let's say, an additional button here or here that counted as the L3 and R3. That would have made a little bit more sense. But as it stands, most people will not be using this type of controller for that type of functionality. Now you have pretty much all of your buttons on here. You have an L, R, the L2, R2, and then you have all of your face buttons, as well as the screenshot and the home button. Now, you'll see this switch here. There is an S and an X marked on here. The S is for switch mode, and then the X is for its X Windows mode. That means that this can be used with Windows as a wireless controller. I believe you can also set this up to be used with Android devices as well through this functionality. It does use USB-C to charge, and on a full charge you'll get anywhere from a mm, little over 15 to maybe 18 hours on a full charge, which is not bad. Now it's build quality, very tight, very compact. This is great, can fit right in your pocket or your backpack, and it makes a good option for a second player. Now, if you're playing a game, say, like Zelda Tears of the Kingdom that requires an analog stick, this is not really going to be the best bet for you. But if you're playing anything that uses digital input, say, like indie retro games, stuff from the Super Nintendo, the Game Boy, I mean, there are a lot of indie games on here that use a standard D-pad, this is great. And its price, it's a steal. One of these will run you about $25. Now, unfortunately, one thing that the controller can't do is wake the Switch from sleep. There are very few controllers that can do that. But using it as a secondary controller or a controller on the go, it's a great option. Now, I will say another thing is because of the way that you hold it, the L2 and R2, not the most ideal placement, but they're not used as much with a lot of the types of games that this would work best for, so it's not that much of a problem. But if you're playing stuff, say, Super Nintendo, or as I said, indie or retro stuff, feels great for that. A game that I personally found worked extraordinarily well with this controller was Zeo Drifter. Now, I would not suggest buying this for one specific game, but just as an example, that was one that I threw out that I played quite a bit with this controller. So, games that fall within the Metroidvania genre, they actually feel wonderful on this controller. Now, the turbo mode that is advertised for this will only work for Windows. This is not a Switch mode. Now, when it comes to getting this to sync up with the Switch, 
there are a couple additional steps. This is not quite as easy for the initial sync as, say, a standard Switch controller, but it's also not that much of a bother either. For the sake of anybody who purchases maybe secondhand or loses the instructions, I'm going to go ahead and post those up here on the screen right now, and I'll also show you how to do it. I'm going to make sure this is in the S position. You want to hold down the home button for a couple seconds, and you see the light starting to flash. And then you are going to want to hit the sync button here on the top and hold that down for a couple seconds. And as you can see, it went into search mode. You go here onto the switch, change grip order. And as you can see, the switch picks up on it. And it actually registers it as a pro controller. And all the buttons work. Everything feels great. This is maybe one or two extra steps over a normal controller, but once you get it synced up, it works great. And then from there, you just hold down the home button to power it on, and you're good to go. Now I'd recommend most of the 8-Bit Do line of controllers. I've had personal experience with the ones that look like the NES controllers and the SNES controllers. They all feel great. They all work great. I've used them on a variety of devices, including the Switch. And they are a good line of controllers. And 8-Bit Do seems to be a pretty good company overall. Now they have made a couple different variations of this controller. Um, I believe the 8-Bit Do Lite 2 actually adds analog sticks into it, as well as one or two other small functions. I believe that one runs for about $35. And they also make a more accessibility-based controller that is very similar to this. It lays out the buttons in a different way, but works better with people who might have certain problems with the controller. And I'd personally recommend any of them that, you know, works for what you're looking for. When you take into account that this is actually cheaper than a single Joy-Con, it's a pretty worthwhile investment, especially if you're looking for extra controllers when you have friends over. Now, a couple other things to keep in mind. This does not have gyroscopic aiming or accelerometers. It does not have any type of rumble function, and it does not have any type of amiibo scanner. This is specifically a baseline controller, but as I said, it does have a good battery life. The button quality is good, and it has all the buttons that are needed for most games out there. As far as I know, they make two different color options for this. The one I have here is obviously the yellow, and then they also make a teal color. They do make some other smaller nano style controllers that are really tiny. I don't know if I would personally recommend those outside of the novelty of them, because functionality wise, they are far more limited and they're a bit uncomfortable due to their extreme small size, but they are cool nonetheless. If this video helped you and you'd like to see more, Please subscribe and hit that like button. Thank you for watching, and I'll talk to you guys later.